Hello everyone, welcome to the special CUBE conversation here to talk about the big announcements, big news, big concepts, and big trends happening. Cisco Live in Barcelona. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE. We're here with Fabio Gori, Senior Director, Cloud Solution Marketing at Cisco. Fabio, great to see you. Thanks for spending time with me to unpack uh, all the exciting news in Barcelona. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you for having me, John. So one of the things that's happening with Cisco, we've covered, certainly we've been reporting, and it's been reported by other outlets as well, and you guys have been transforming and, and continuing to innovate. Uh, Cisco has transformed itself into the next level, building on your successes. We've been covering that, and that's been all about the cloud, it's been all about networking going, you know, software driven, you know, software uh, powered, network operations, DevOps, the whole thing is now infiltrating into, into the new model. Um, but it's clear now, and there's no debate, that on-premise data centers, on-premise environments of IT, service providers, the entire you know, computing industry is connecting with the cloud. That's been kind of validated and we've been staring at that for a couple of years. And now everyone's starting to take action. This is a key theme here in Barcelona for you guys. And we heard um, your CEO talk about it last year at Cisco Live in North America, that transition to cloud. Validated across the board, we saw Andy Jassy, the CEO of AWS, actually announce an on-premise device. Hybrid cloud has been validated, so mm -hmm. public cloud and on-premise. And now, visibility into what Kubernetes has enabled with multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. This is the new normal. Describe that impact in the marketplace. What does it mean for customers? What do they do? What, what, is it, what does this mean when now enterprises are seeing on-premise and cloud coming together? Absolutely, well, uh, you know, if you think about it, you got to start from the application. So if you take a step back, right, um, we've been talking about digitization for so long, but what does that ultimately mean, right? People need to build more and more applications to digitize their, their business processes, their customer experience, and so on and so forth. Ultimately, what we're seeing is that these applications are becoming exceptionally distributed, right? Because they go with what it makes sense. Whatever the data is, whatever the user is, you may have low latency needs, um, you may have actually just, um, you know, the right needs to go all the way to the cloud. In reality, you have a mix of, of this kind of needs. But workloads are distributed, and people want to harness this multi-cloud world. And that's what we're seeing. I love these shifts, it's kind of like that. People have been living on two sides of the street, you know, old way, new way. It's clear that the migration to this new model, cloud, is the new way, and that's been validated again. So you've got the old way and new way. Describe in your mind the old way and the new way from Cisco, because if you look at the history of Cisco, the dominance and the success it had, and recently had an opportunity to interview John Chambers at his house, and he talked about that, that dynamic of how Cisco is so dominant, the culture, and going to the next level. The data center, you guys have great success, networking, edge, this is new, new your core business, yep. but that's still relevant with the cloud in the new way. So talk about what's changed, old way, new way for Cisco. I'll give you a try. So fundamentally, if you, if you, if you remember where we're coming from, we are coming from an era where we've been seeing infrastructure kind of dictating application requirements um, through the other way around as well. But you had an application, you will buy specific hardware networking and everything else, including firewalls for a specific infrastructure, right? So that era actually is not going away. It's there because it's built an immense amount of legacy that you cannot all of a sudden throw away. However, the new world is a, is a world where you see applications fundamentally going pretty much across multiple type of domains, not just the data center domain anymore, but here comes the cloud. We have a lot of applications that are going to the edge. If you have a branch office, right? Uh, you may want to uh, take your application over there because it's simpler, it's, it's sometimes it's more economic, you don't need to move all the data, and still you can have those applications collaborating with your data center and with your cloud. So what you're now seeing is a completely different world where applications want the infrastructure to be programmable and easy accessible and still extremely secure. That's interesting, the old way was you, know, the, you dictate applications, you can only do as much as the network and the, and yeah. the infrastructure will let you to do. Yeah. And then now as infrastructure becomes more abundant, yep. data tsunamis happen, certainly a lot of data's coming in. So that's why the storage industry never is dying, it's always growing. <laughs> storage industry is always growing, servers, there's always need for compute. But as there's more abundance in that, it almost is a limitless opportunity for applications. So it's not a, you know, kill the old and bring in the new, it's more of a foundational, old is now foundational. It is literally next level thing. So Kubernetes, service meshes, these programmable policy-based yep. abstractions are showing the way, and that's a network construct. Policy is a network construct. So the first time we're seeing is the coming together of the app market 
with infrastructure. Absolutely. And if you think about it, uh, even a step uh, before the apps, people have, when they build application, they have a business intent, right? Let's make an example. Um, you take a um, healthcare application, right? You want, in an hospital, you want the doctors to be able to access, uh, you know, the full extent of the data of a, of a customer record, for instance. You may not want the nurses doing the same thing, or for instance, you don't want the nurses and the doctors to get access to the financial system of that hospital. So this is actually a business intent that that given application uh, will have to respect. Well, the infrastructure can and has to cope with this kind of requirements by um, delivering the appropriate kind of segmentation, right? Yeah. So that you'll be able to ensure that what the application wants to do, the infrastructure delivers. What has changed in the, in the on-premise and cloud world in your mind? Because to have that kind of coordination, and, and you guys are have announced here some great announcements around seamless end-to-end -end is a theme we're seeing. Um, you're seeing hyper-convergence uh, uh, every, anywhere. You're seeing um, application-centric infrastructure concepts everywhere. But when you actually go into the hood <laughs> and look at how complex it is, um, it's almost magical in the sense that it's, it's going on. It's, I know yeah. it's hard work and people who, who, who know networking know it's hard. What are the innovations? What's enabling that? What is the key yeah. driver that's making you guys connect an on-premise data, complex data center environment that has now edges, private networks, yeah. hybrid, private cloud, IoT edge, enterprise edge, campuses, the old stuff, now with cloud. What are the key Linchpins. I'm going to take. I'm going to take on one of the the words that you use: complexity. People are looking for the opposite of complexity. People are looking for simplicity. Easy to say, more difficult to do. But what sits between complexity and 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 turning it into a, a more simple kind of architecture is automation. So what you have to have is fundamentally an infrastructure that becomes automated, programmable, that takes the business intent or the application intent as an input, and actually with a closed loop system, fundamentally monitors and gives you the assurance, okay, the implementation and the assurance that actually what you want to do gets delivered by the infrastructure. And this has to be literally a holistic and cross-domain kind of architecture. What do I mean with cross-domain? Uh, you're going out of the data center, you're going out to the edge, you're now uh, going to the cloud. This should be seen as a cohesive, almost fluid environment where you can actually push your policy your security models, right? And transforming this highly fragmented architecture into uh, a set of domains or a multi-domain architecture that you can control, that you can automate as if it was all yours, so to speak. Even though in the cloud, for instance, you're going into a domain that you don't control end to end. So big concept here being discussed in Barcelona is multi-domain, you just get yeah. that. Explain that a little bit and then take that to where cloud integration comes in because the other thread that we're seeing here is multi-cloud. Yeah. So multi-domain, multi-cloud, the same, are they different? What's the nuance points there? Yeah, again, the, the, the critical point is, let's think applications. Applications want to go, and it's convenient to go into multiple domains, right? Depending on what you want to do. You want to access to, you want to access uh, clouds uh, innovation from wherever it comes from, so that's why we have a multi-cloud world. The data center is still there, it's critically important. You have a lot of applications, databases that are still there. And now we're seeing the big new uh, shiny object, which, which is more and more so-called robo remote office, branch office applications, um, where for instance, IDC believes that 30% of applications are going to be deployed into this kind of environments. So your problem is now connecting all of this together, right? And because the applications are going anywhere, our data center strategy is that the data center needs to follow the applications and support them wherever they go. So it's a data center anywhere kind of um, uh, kind of strategy. The data center has to flex and provide that. Yes. Be ready for anything, basically, from from applications. Yep. What you're getting at, and all the all the the, the plumbing and all the some, all the intelligence uh, underneath it have to be reactive to what the application wants. Absolutely. And the application doesn't have to get into the provisioning or any kind of policy because that's the infrastructure as code DevOps. Point is that is that kind of absolutely that right? the application has an intent right uh, there's also application okay. policy etc but the, it needs to be translated into infrastructure policy where we we've been talking about it a minute ago when we were doing the the healthcare kind of example right well we've been super excited um, in in collaborating with you guys on Kubernetes we have a special section on SiliconANGLE 
uh, called the Kubernetes Special Report. That's evolving into multi-cloud special report, so the folks watching siliconangle.com, check out the uh, multi-cloud special report that should be up, on, uh, up by now. It was the Kubernetes, but ton of interest. We're seeing startups coming out of the Kubernetes. You're seeing um, cloud native world, CNCF and Linux Foundation promoting tons of great ecosystem development. Mm -hmm. Pulling together, those developers want more infrastructure. And so that, and they don't want to deal with it, right? So this is where you, the cloud strategy has been paying off for you guys. You guys have had done deals with Google, Azure, AWS, SAP, Red Hat, among others. Yep. You guys are well poised for this. Talk about cloud center. That's a big piece of the story here. Yeah. Cloud center suite, a new capabilities. Yep. Talk about the impact of cloud and cloud center. Yeah, so let me let me let me take a step back if you want and and uh, and, and tell you a little bit more about what we're announcing here, right? Because it's a pretty big announcement. I mentioned data center anywhere. What does it mean, right? Well, of course, our data center uh, portfolio is centered around two big components. The first one is networking, right? Particular application centric infrastructure, ACI. Uh, based on the Nexus 9K kind of architecture. And the second one is our computing um, portfolio, uh, particularly, uh, you know, uh, the hyperconverged infrastructure, Cisco Hyperflex. Um, that's, of course, uh, you know, an extremely efficient way of condensing, uh, you know, what you need uh, to make it very flexible uh, in your application implementation. Well, we have two major news here, right, in these two areas. And the third is absolutely what you were asking for, which is Cloud Center. So with ACI, and it's interesting because they're going into uh, two, uh, if you want, different directions when it comes to this multi-cloud domain. ACI uh, was already virtualized in the previous releases. Let me just explain what ACI is real quick. Oh, for... sorry, application-centric infrastructure is fundamentally Cisco intent-based yeah. uh, networking for the data center, yeah. okay? It gives you uh, uh, programmability of the infrastructure, it gives you segmentation, it gives you security, and a high degree of automation. That's with, the key with under simplicity. the hood kind of capabilities, just exactly. to make sure I get that exactly. defined. Okay, continue. So ACI. And so, um, in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, if you want, developments, releases of ACI, what we've been doing uh, was to um, aggressively virtualize ACI, right? So that you will have constructs like virtual pods and virtual leaves uh, to, for instance, scale your data center implementation to the edge. Now, where we're going uh, with this new announcement is exactly on the other side, which is we're extending ACI to the cloud, to Azure and AWS so that um, the construct that you have uh, typically on-prem under your control, uh, such as tenants, uh, EPGs, and things of this nature, will be translated into the equivalent construct in AWS, um, whether it's VPCs or security groups and the likes, the two things end up fundamentally corresponding. So that now we have one construct that extends from the edge to the data center to the cloud. That's a pretty big deal. And what does that mean to the customer? Just give an example. It means a high degree of automation, security, and control on the resources, right? So that you can impose one policy that propagates um, all across the board. One way of monitoring, uh, you know, the data center flows and discovering, for instance, if you have uh, if you have any kind of security threat. Uh, monitoring uh, um, application performance thanks to the integration with the uh, app. So this Dynamics. fully checks the hybrid cloud box. This so if I say, hey, yes. we want a hybrid deployment, this checks the box saying I can operate in say Amazon yes. or whatever cloud and on premises in the data center with ACI, both places, without changing any code? Is it all seamless? What's the, what's the, well, what's the uh, catch? Well, ACI is going to come with a specific software. This is all software, yeah. that's that's the beauty of it, right? It's, yeah. it's in line with the transformation of the company that you were referring to. It's all software and it goes into AWS and it uses, of course, all the APIs to connect to the uh, to the um, uh, AWS resources that you're, uh, you're, you're acquiring from AWS, right? So that's one big bucket of news. The second bucket of news is Hyperflex. That's actually heading to the edge because what we're seeing is more and more applications that have um, components of the application itself or even entire applications that are going into remote office, branch offices. And the reason are, are many, right? It could be cost reason, it could be data gravity reason, it could be just low latency reason, right? We all know that, you know, to go back and forth from the cloud is not always convenient, as well as if you lose the connectivity, your branch is dead, right? So yeah. <laughs> you have you to, have you need to have business continuity in all of this. And so um, it doesn't mean that you don't want the cloud, you want a collaboration across this, again, fluid uh, sort of infrastructure. So Hyperflex come with uh, a very um, efficient kind of, uh, kind of form factor over there now, it's Hyperflex Edge. And 
it's control the beauty of this is that because you have many remote offices and branch offices is controlled from the cloud with Cisco Interside which is of course our console and uh, and cloud system to manage all these endpoints not just hyperflex but also UCS so when when you think of this now you understand what do we mean with data center anywhere because we're taking both our networking and our computing platforms anywhere the application needs them right and the third component, which actually is where your question started yeah, from, is yeah. application lifecycle management in this kind of infrastructure becomes even more of a problem, right? It is extremely complicated now um, to have applications in multiple clouds and then in your data center and to the, in, in the edge and in, in you know all these different kind of places. So what we've done with Cloud Center, um, which is our flagship cloud management and, and orchestration system, is two big things. First. Uh, we have expanded the functionalities by adding uh, new modules, uh, especially the cost optimizer that helps operations this team. Is Cloud Center Suite now. It, you're this exactly right. Thank suite. you for that. Okay. It's the Cloud Center Suite, yeah. and I'll explain you in a moment why we uh, we move um, uh, the branding slightly from Cloud Center to Cloud Center Suite, uh, because we highly um, uh, modularize uh, the software and and make it and made it really uh, much more easy to consume. I'll go there in a moment. But going back to what is new. Uh, first of all is cost optimizer, right? That's, that's brand new and it helps um, operations team to right size the workload um, to, to pick up the, the best instances in the cloud that you're using um, to actually minimize your investment or reach your, your goal of performance and cost, right? Uh, that's one big thing. Uh, the second one is that we are adding a very smart uh, uh, so-called action orchestrator, which is a workflow manager that helps you automate the interconnection of your cloud uh, management system to all the other systems, right? Uh, some of these uh, uh, plugins and integrations come out of the box, um, particularly with the higher level uh, tiers of, of licensing, such as with ServiceNow, for instance, or we give you already a built-in integration with Cisco Interside or UCS Director, which is the infrastructure manager for Cisco infrastructure. But you can use uh, that kind of platform uh, and module um, to build your own integrations with the other systems. That's very important because the cloud management system doesn't exist in isolation, right? It needs to integrate with all the other IT management solution that you have on-prem. Uh, and that's one big thing. The second big thing, as you said before, when you said about the suite, is the fact that uh, because we have written all of this new software in Kubernetes, right? This is highly scalable, highly portable. So now we can give you um, different uh, tiers of licenses. You can start very small, as small as around $50,000, right, for subscription service. And you can actually buy the subscription on-prem, or, that's big news, you can buy it software as a service. So Cloud Center is now a SaaS offering. Yes. Available when? It's going to be, uh, so all the subscription news, the new software is going to be available literally uh, next month, in, in a few days from now, right, in February. Um, and the SaaS version is going to be available in North America um, in March, so right away. Uh, for Europe, of course, uh, due to the GDPR uh, implementation, uh, our customers will have to wait until the summer, but it's, it's quite... So pretty immediate and GDPR, a little bit of uh, extra work done. Yeah. Okay, so bottom line me on the Cloud Center suite. What is the, the purpose? Is it to be the high level management suite? How is it connecting into other systems? So if I'm a, I am have all these different management tools out there from Cisco and others, is it connecting into it? Am I connecting up? Can you just explain quickly, yeah. you know, the purpose of it and how yeah. it works? So uh, really this, the goal of Cloud Center is to, do, is to do three things. The first one is it, it wants to simplify uh, cloud management um, and how it does it, uh, right? Uh, one of the key patents that we acquired together with Clicker, right? Clicker Cloud Center when we brought them in uh, uh, more than two years ago, um, was uh, the uh, really unique uh, way that they have to model applications, right? Um, the way that people are managing cloud uh, management and, uh, and, and orchestration is still extremely manual. I mean, many customers are still kind of doing scripting. Uh, we have cases of customers uh, that are scripting like 1,200 lines of codes just to upload a piece of software onto the cloud. We think the approach should be different, right? Mm -hmm. The approach should be, you should be able to model uh, that application, your application, model it once, and then thanks to cloud APIs, we have 16 different APIs, into, uh, cloud integrations with AWS, Azure, Google, you name it, right, IBM and the likes. Uh, we realize, of course, on-prem yeah. for private cloud. 
once you model your application, you can use any of these other clouds as a target for implementation. Okay, that allows you to have a very, very effective uh, cloud management solution because you don't risk to make mistakes. Uh, you leave the tool. So you said it's written in Kubernetes? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We script all of this now, we program all this in Kubernetes. Wow. So you may tell us, hey, you're walking the talk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're absolutely doing that. And, yeah. that's the re and that's how actually we can do it on-prem in a Kubernetes infrastructure. By the way, if you need one, yeah. we have the Cisco Cloud Center platform, a Hyperflex underneath to do it. Or you can buy from the cloud because we're uploading all of that to the cloud. You guys have done a good job at Kubernetes, just as a side note, um, you guys have done the work is doing the cloud integrations. And I think what's interesting about Kubernetes, unlike other trends I've seen in some of these uh, open source projects, some hype comes up and then it kind of drops off or it gets hyped up and it's too hard to, to um, roll out or use. It costs too much. Um, and so people are actually using Kubernetes for not just standing it up, they're actually deploying it for a purpose. So congratulations on that. I think it's a real accomplishment. Thank you for that. Thank you we're for that. No, we're a we're big believer into this. So simplifying really multi-cloud management is one big, big thing. Um, reducing time to value is another big thing because with the integrations and the ability you know, to integrate with the other tools, you can put it in production very, very quickly. And then it's incredibly easy to consume. You can start small and grow up. So I did a little um, checklist here. I want to just run this by you. And then I'm going to ask you a question around what all this means to your, to your customer base because obviously the world's changing. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, kind of you know, surveys and interactions with a lot of network guys to kind of feel out how the market's going. But I want mm -hmm. to get your reaction. So interesting thing, you guys have a, this builder model, very similar to Amazon, you know, toolkits for cloud builders. Uh, you guys are really investing heavily in it. So security, you got StealthWatch, Tetration, Analytics, you got AppDynamics, and Tetration as well, Data Center, Hyperflex, UCS, Nexus, Check, uh, Cloud Apps, WebEx, I don't know what else is in there. Um, there's also cloud apps, cloud native apps, which you're connecting into. Management, Cloud Center, Container Platform, and IoT, Kinetic, Networking, VEdge, Meraki, Cloud Service, Router, a bunch of other things. So you guys are building quite the portfolio mm -hmm. on here, right? So given that you guys have that security to networking kind of end to end, with the um, application-centric infrastructure kind of expanding and intent-based networking combined with cloud, seems to be kind of the end to end is the theme. It really is. It's, it's, it's again, end-to-end -end and across multiple domains because that's the, um, the thing that doesn't come across with end-to-end -end is the fact that you need to cross different domains that are exceptionally different from, from each other. And so having consistent policies and a single security model, um, having one mean of networking and, uh, and securing all of this in a containerized world, which, which is where we're progressively going, that's everything, and you know, it's not me saying it, but if you look at the CNCF surveys, they'll tell you that securing and networking <laughs> containers is one of the toughest things. So, to I got to ask you the, the tough question. Totally makes sense, you got my buy-in on it. I totally believe in the, in the vision. Making it work, okay, making it smart, and making it scale are the three kind of things I'm looking at. Mm. Give us your take on how you guys are looking at those three kind of you know, checkpoints. You got to get this up and running, so one, make it work. You know, end to end, multiple domains. Yeah. Make it intelligent, that's data, smarter, you know, automation kicks in, and obviously scaling it up at, you know, with all the checkbox security yeah. and everything else. So take us through the strategy yeah. and what you guys are thinking there and, and, and the impact with that in mind to the person on the other side, your customer, the buyer, and customer Cisco to manage it. Yeah. That's this is a big sea change. Yeah and the benefits are pretty lucrative on the other side if you can pull this off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> take, take I, us I can that. touch upon three big aspects. So first of all, we've been, we've been talking about architectures, but architectures doesn't mean that you shouldn't have uh, best of breed products, right? It starts from there. Those are the atomic components of, of any strategy, right? You got to have best of breed products. Now these products need to integrate into an architecture that solves true business problems, such as the intent base, uh, you know, architecture that we've been talking about. The third aspect is actually how you help customers to be successful. And I would love to call out our partner strategy, right? Which for, I, I would say for as long as 30 years has been Cisco's critical differentiator. And I think uh, this is an enormous asset, especially when you look at the number one problem in IT out there, which is not Kubernetes and it's not cloud, it's actually lack of talent. People don't have the skill set and the talent. So relying on an ecosystem that helps you expanding what you need uh, because you don't have it inside is fundamentally important. That puts a lot of pressure on you guys. Absolutely, uh, but this is, this is a critical asset and uh, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of investments also on the, the customer experience side of the house with our leader, Maria Martinez. 
uh, that's taking actually this customer experience uh, sort of approach to the next level. More and more, uh, it's about this architecture also being cloud attached. Mm -hmm. So you heard me talking about InterSight, it doesn't come by chance, right? The more you can rely on, uh, on this kind of uh, architectures, the more you can harvest analytics. Yeah. You can do cross-correlation across multiple networks and domains yeah. and figure out what is going wrong. Uh, that's something that um, providers of pinpoint products just cannot even dream of delivering. As final question for you, first of all, thanks for uh, spending the time and chatting, and Cube is going to be rolling out a lot of content, we're going to be following what's going on on your end too. Really like Cisco's vibe, you guys are very transparent and collaborating, appreciate uh, the, the working with you guys. Um, final question. On, on if someone's watching this, I'm a Cisco customer. Mm. You know, we've been talking about the network guy. We've talked talk to a couple, you know, and surveying some some enterprises where you know the networks they've done the heavy lifting. It's been part of the computing industry, you know, networking compute. They've been running the show and really have moved the needle. Campus networking, the list goes on and on. But now that foundation set, we're going to a whole other level. It's almost like a sea change on the personality side of mm. the persona of the people who've built it out and now have to build the next generation. Yeah. Um, am I relevant? Am I going to be the mainframe guy? Am I going to be leading the charge or am I going to be left behind? There's a lot of um, cognitive uh, dissidents around decisions. Should I go here? Should I go there? Architecture. So there's a lot of psychology and also decision making that's going to be determined by your core audience. Mm -hmm. That person out there uh, is, 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 is your target audience. They're thinking about these things because they want to do well and they don't want to be left behind. What do you say to that audience about Cisco now the opportunity for them personally, their ability to one, grow their skill gaps or have an impact to being a key change agent for this next generation. What do you say to that, that person out there about Cisco and the opportunity for them? It's, it's a very big question. Um, I, will, I will split the question in two parts. Um, first of all is, uh, what is your advice to IT professionals, right? How can they uh, not just survive, but thrive and, and be the, 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 the heroes of this, uh, this transition? And it's pretty simple, actually. You have to understand what your business wants. Um, we've been talking about how do you close this gap between infrastructure and application, but in other terms, it's covering the gap between what you do and what the business wants. You've got to understand that, right? So that's number one. Second part of the question is, okay, considering this, is Cisco the right partner for me? And the answer, uh, of course, from a Cisco standpoint is You're absolutely biased, okay. yes, because our entire company strategy is wrapped around this concept of intent-based architecture, where our goal is to map the business intent into the infrastructure underneath, and that's exactly your core business, Mr. IT professional, yeah. right? So I see this as a, as, a, as a marriage in heaven, right, in terms of uh, where I see uh, really um, the talent need uh, for IT going, right, and IT professionals, and where the company is going, right? If we if, if we're right, and I think we are, this is going to be a, a great ride and not a threatening one. I think everything's lining up and getting clear visibility into what the role of cloud is, the scale piece, the Absolutely. economics are just undeniable, and that the role of technologists now are super important. There's no jobs really going away, they're shifting. This is. This is the reality. This is the, kind of what the exciting opportunity. It is, but but again, uh, it, it's about bringing IT very close to the business. In the end, I believe it's just that's just going to be continuity between what we call today line of yeah. business and IT. It's just a company that wants to win in the marketplace, right? It wants to get faster, efficient, usual kind of you know terminology. Yeah. But you know this this gap is going to go away. Fabio, thank you for taking the time to share this conversation. I'm John Furrier, this is a Cube Conversation here at Barcelona Live, this is Cisco Live Europe. Back to the Cube coverage, go to thecube.net to check out all the live coverage and Cube interviews in Barcelona. I'm here with Fabio Gori, Senior Director, Cloud Solution Marketing Cisco. I'm John Furrier with the Cube, thanks for watching. <laughs>